Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a quick video tutorial about how to take the textures created in Substance and export those maps in a way so that we can plug it into a V-Ray material inside 3ds Max. So if you look at my screen, you can see I have this nice, um, this nice uh, machete axe thing uh, with some nice Substance materials on it. So I want to export these in a way that V-Ray will read it. So we should know that by default, Substance is going to use the Metalness Roughness, or yes, Metalness Roughness workflow, uh, where V-Ray uses the Reflection Gloss workflow. So we actually need a Reflection Pass, a Gloss Pass, pass and IOR Pass. So let's kick these out in a way that V-Ray will be able to read these. So let's go to Export Textures. And then go to config, and I'll just select V-Ray. So, obviously, I work crazily. I keep things as the highest they can go. But 4K, 2K should work fine. Um, if you go to configuration, and let's just see what maps we're going to get with V-Ray. So here you can see it's going to, I don't have emissive in my channels uh, in Substance, but it's going to kick out an emissive height IOR diffuse, glossiness, normal, and reflection. So it's going to kick those out, and that's what we want. So I already exported these, so you just make sure those settings are there, hit right size, and hit export. So then you should get something like this, wherever you're going to save them to. I got my diffuse, glossiness, height map, IOR, normal, and reflection map. So let's jump on over to 3ds Max. I have my Machete X, and I'll hit M to bring up my Material Editor. So how this object was constructed, um, basically you can check out my UV space. Oops. You can see I just put everything on one UDIM space. Um, so all we need to do is make one material and plug all these texture maps in. So I'll grab a V-Ray material, and I will start plugging these guys in. So what I would need, let's obviously diffuse. That's the easiest one. So just grab this guy and plug him in. Working our way down, we need our reflection. Our reflection map. I'll bring him and just plug him into reflect map. Next one down, bump map. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with V-Ray, you typically want to come down to the maps V-Ray and grab the V-Ray normal map. So something cool you can do with the V-Ray normal map is you can plug in a normal map here, and if you have a grayscale bump map or height map, you can plug it in here and play with that and play with the um, different intensities. But I'm just going to use a normal map. Drag that in. Let it load. Okay. And so when I look at this, this reminds me like, hey, some maps you need to override the gamma. And if you don't know too much about that right now, I don't want to get too deep into it, but just know that due to uh, color space and color correction factors, uh, sometimes for some of these maps, we're going to actually have to override the gamma so that the color lines up. Uh, and the easiest way to tell <laughs> is the normal map because you can see this is like this lighter purplish color and this is a darker purple or purplish color. So this map should look more, have this tone to it. Um, this is like normal maps equivalent to 50% grayscale in other maps. So what I want to do is basically double click this bitmap that I brought in for the normal map. And I'll just hit here and I'll override the gamma to one. And you can instantly see that purplish kind of no height adjustment <laughs> color in the normal map is that lighter purple. So I'll open it and that better, that matches a lot better. So now I'll go ahead and plug this in. So... Since we're already talking about overriding materials, I think the reflection we can keep in, yes, the reflection and diffuse we can keep um, the gamma correction. However, for the IOR, 
and glossiness map, we're going to have to override those values as well. So next in our list, we have the reflect glossiness. So I'll bring in the reflection glo or the glossiness map. Bring this guy in, and I did do 8K, so that's why stuff's going a little slow. Uh, I'll plug that into reflection gloss. Double click the bitmap and just override that gamma and hit OK. Lastly, I need that Fresnel IOR value. So let's grab our IOR map right here. And I want to plug this into Fresnel IOR. And another thing I got to do, override this gamma. Okay. So one thing I notice is that when I brought this value and plugged it in, it's still showing this as black. And I know, especially because I texture and substance, that this should be more like a brushed aluminum. So it needs to be more silver, more metallic, right? So something's wrong with my IOR. Um, the first culprit I'm going to check is right here. In the so I select the material in the reflect settings. Fresnel, yep. So it's using it, but this L is checked, and this is basically blocking it, so it's not reading from the map. So I'm going to hit that L, and now we get that nice uh, metallic finish that I wanted. And now it's reading the map. Or the IOR. Okay, so that's pretty much the material side, but let's see it in action. So I'm also going to kind of do a quick tutorial um, about bringing in HDRI files uh, into V-Ray. So let's kind of move you to the side, um, and let's go ahead and assign this material. So I'll select all my objects. Oops. Select all my objects and just go ahead and assign this material. Okay. And then to get to, uh, my maps to show up, in case you don't know, you can click this icon right here, Show Shaded Material and Viewport. So I had this material applied. I can select a map and just show what that map looks like in Viewport. That's the only thing I did. All right. So we have this now. HDRIs. So HDRIs are fun. Realistic lighting solution. Key thing, you want to make sure you get an actual HDRI file, not just grab a JPEG off of Google that's a spherical map uh, and plug it in. We actually want a .HDRI file. So I like to use this site, um, HDRI Haven, and it's really good. A lot of free, um, a lot of free legit HDR files and we can get up to 16k which is pretty insane um, I'm gonna stick to like 4k or 8k but basically I just found this skylit garage map on this uh, website so let's quickly if you go to HDRIs yeah you can sort by all outdoor skies so he's got a lot I highly recommend supporting him uh, he's giving this to us for free so uh, throw him a couple bucks all right, so I got this Skylit Garage. So I got the 4K map. I just selected it and downloaded it. So I have that on my desktop. So let's bring up the Material Editor. Um, I'm going to scroll down to Maps, V-Ray, and grab V-Ray HDRI. And now I can't just drag an HDR file in. Uh, you actually want to load it into the V-Ray HDRI. So I'll double click it, uh, go to bitmap, and I'll navigate to my desktop where I save that sky map. So important, you wanna make sure you, the mapping type set to 3ds Max standard, so it's just gonna be a square image, right? So you wanna make sure you change this to spherical. So if you look at the maps, uh, these sky maps or HDRIs have this spherical, they're called spherical maps, in case you're, you don't know. 
Um, so yeah, it's basically an image that's flattened out, but if you wrap it together, it uh, like on the inside of a sphere, for example, it'll be a complete 360 degree image. So you want to make sure you switch this to spherical. Alrighty. Um, so, oh, where does this go? I'm glad you asked. Let's go into our create tab. Let's go to lights and I'll go to V-Ray and I'll just create a simple V-Ray light and let's bring this guy up so you guys can see and I'll just hit interactive preview so you can see a live update so you can see I have my light and that actually doesn't look that bad but I want really re nice reflections so I'm going to change this light to a dome light so that we can use our HDRI and the reason I didn't explain why it's important to get the .hdri file, high dynamic range image. We have all the exposure levels captured in that one image um, file. Whereas a JPEG, that's compressed, right? So you're not going to get that nice high dynamic range in the, the shadows and the highlights that you can get from an HDRI or .exr file. So that's why it is imperative, if you want realistic lighting, use a HDRI file, use an EXR file. Um, so yeah, back to the light. Let's switch this to dome. And you can see in my render preview, kind of blew this out. So basically, it's looking at this color and it's saying, there's pretend there's a dome around the whole image. It's just emitting this white light. So what we need to do is grab our... HDRI texture and we'll plug it right here into our light uh, as a texture and we'll do an instance so if we update this it will update here and so now you can see it's on there but it's pretty bright when you set this to a dome light you can kick it down the multiplier to one and that does a pretty good job that's a pretty good exposure so you can like mess with the multiplier to change exposure it's point 0.2 or maybe it was too bright we can do two so yeah that looks pretty darn good and right now this is interactive preview so it's going to res up and it's going to take a time this is like a turbo smooth version so it's going to take some time to kind of res up but let's kind of position it really quick oops Let's see what this is doing. So yeah, let's let it res up um, a little bit, and I'll come back to this. So really quick, uh, we can tell these textures came in super nicely. Um, these textures are relatively simple, so I apologize um, for the simplicity of the textures but this workflow works well for more complex textures as well so let's go back to substance and if I go here you can kind of see Um, so if we want to kind of gauge this materials in the same lighting, we can actually import uh, that HDR file. So if you go to import resources, add resource, navigate to that HDR file. Oops, taking a second. I think it doesn't like having to render uh, real time. So skylight, switch it from undefined to environment. And then come down here and select to either current session uh, this specific project or just dock this environment map for future use on all projects. So I already imported mine uh, as a session just because I just need it for this demo. And I'll go to my viewer settings and I'll navigate to that Skylit Garage HDRI and just have it load here. And we can kind of compare. Another thing I like to do is turn on shadows. That'll give you more a better comparison. I'll hit view, hide, so we can see. So yeah, you can see how how we're using, oops, uh, um, let's move you over here. The same, um, we're getting the same results. Well, pretty close, different material, material sets, right? Different render engines. So some light tweaking, 
would be needed to make it like one for one, which is pretty darn um, pretty pretty hard to do. Uh, one more thing we can try in V-Ray is I'll keep this interactive preview going, but I will just go to rendering, render setup, and we can try uh, playing with the color space. Um, so I'll go to V-Ray, color mapping, and switch this to linear multiply. But I don't notice too much of a change to be honest and then just make sure the mode is color mapping so yeah that's such a little difference i didn't see a change personally and let's just for fun let's stop this and see what it looks like in iray yeah so iray is going to be a more realistic representation of what you can expect to get when you take your textures into v-ray you can see how close oops using the wrong shortcut to pan you can see how close these textures came in when you start previewing in v-ray so the default opengl kind of viewport render uh preview in uh substance looks kind of off but when you check this v-ray uh iray setting in substance then that's the one that i would compare your textures to to get a feel of what they're going to look like in V-Ray and then I can just let this res up even more just so you can see it. So hopefully you guys have a good understanding of oh I have nice textures and substance I want to kick those texture maps out for V-Ray plug them into a material get a nice HDRI um, you can see in this tutorial we can bring in the same HDRIs and um, gauge the lighting that way too so we not only do we have good material uh look dev kind of set up but we have a good like lighting for hdrs anyway uh look dev set up all right hope this was helpful um i will see you all next time have a wonderful day